<laughs> oh my god. Today's video sponsor is GVG Mall. We're using my SKG discount code leads to a 25% off across several products, making a Windows 10 serial key only $16. After the payment, you'll receive the key in your account and all you need to do is to introduce it in your Windows settings and BAM! You have an activated system. Hello guys and shit gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. As for today's video, we have a remake, the promised video remake of the how to install the AMD Amer Nime Moda drivers, the Amer Nime slash Nimes, I think. Now, I promised this video some days ago, but I was quite sick, kind of a bit sick and I just wanted to relax a bit, I, I'm pretty sure you understand, I mean, everyone wants to relax here and there, uh, <laughs> in between the, the work schedules and so on, but anyway, I'm really happy to bring you this video and to help you once again with how to install these drivers, because recently we had a bit of changes in terms of the how to install these drivers due to the Amernime installer, okay? Previously we had just um, kind of um, a CMD, a CMD window, so basically a console window, and now we kind of have a user interface that's pretty easy to use, that's why I'm remaking this video. Now, one of the advantages of these drivers, the Amernime Moda drivers, is to basically use smart access memory in older cards, such, for example, as the Vega cards and the Polaris cards, like the RX 580 or the Vega 56 and Vega 64. Currently, smart access memory is only enabled for the RDNA 1 and RDNA 2 cards, the RX 5000 and 6000 series, okay? And with these drivers, you can actually enable that feature in older cards. And the same applies for the new DX9 10 and 11 optimizations that have been released officially in the 22.5.2 drivers. Those optimizations are solely, and I repeat, at least so far, are solely for the RDNA 2 cards, basically the RX 6000 series. And with these drivers, the Amenime Moda drivers, we can actually use those optimizations on older cards such as RDNA cards, Vega and Polaris. These drivers bring you a whole new world uh, for people having older hardware or for people, for example, having laptops or APUs. So it is a must in most scenarios. But well, if you want to know more about that with a little bit of testing, you have this video that I made some days ago. And you can also watch this video of the current pre-release drivers with open GL improvements up to 55%, which is crazy. In some scenarios, like some people tested, even double, more than double the performance on open GL scenarios, okay? But let's go to the installation. So the first thing that you actually need to do is to open your um, your browser, for example, your Mozilla, uh, Firefox, your Opera, your Chrome, doesn't really matter, and go here or to Google, for example, but you can just type it in the search bar and search for Amer Nime. The first link that will appear, basically from SourceForge, is the one that you want to open. I know that in the links in the description I actually gave you the this one with a Guru 3D, but you actually want this one now, okay? Things changed a bit, so you want this one on the Source Forge. You open it, and then you have several links here, and you have, let me see, so share this, summary, had a review, I think that we have another one, yes. Basically, we have here, download here, with the SourceForge projects Amenime Zone files. Click on it, and then you have the several, okay, this link, this that you see here will be in the description, okay? So you can use it if you want to. And it will appear like here. So basically we have the release development, we have release Polaris Vega Navi, so RX 500 Vega cards and RX 5000 and 6000 series, okay? Then we have the legacy GCN pre-Polaris because Polaris and Vega are still GCN, Polaris are GCN4 and Vega is GCN, Polaris cards are GCN4 and Vega cards are GCN5, sorry. And um, the pre-Polaris basically are the legacy G GCNs like uh, the, R the R9 Fury cards, um, the R9 390, 380, R7 270 and so on, 370 and so on. Basically those are the pre-Polaris and you even have the older ones like the ATI Terra scale, like the HD 2000, 3000 and 4000, okay? This is how much this driver goes in, deeper in, because with this driver you can even 
use newer driver versions in older cards such as these ones while the these cards will most likely have official support up to like 2017 so yes this is a really good thing now most most people will have polaris vega or navi cards so this is the one that we're gonna use open it and then you have several versions several uh, versions of the drivers and you have the Nimes slim beta driver another beta driver another beta driver 2.0 and finally okay it is the normal driver of the 22.5.2 this is the one you want now take in consideration that you have here the 22.5.2 and you have here the 22.5.1 the difference is even using the, um, the model drivers the 22.5.1 um, if you use the regular installation, you won't have the DX11 Im improvements in the RDNA 2 cards, while if you go to the 22.5.2, you will have the DX9, 10 and 11 optimizations for the RDNA 2 cards, for the RX 6000 series, even on the regular installation. This because these new drivers, these the 22.5.1 and 22.5.2, let you choose in between using the regular driver package or using the, um, the DX9, 10 and 11 improvements for the RDNA cards and older, okay? So that's it. As for now, we're gonna download the 22.5.2. Okay, now you just wait five seconds. Okay, after the download is complete, you just open the folder where you download the drivers to, okay? Oh, I already have them downloaded here. Anyway, you open the folder, now you can simply create a folder on your desktop and drag the contents of this zip or WinRAR to that same folder, okay? Basically, you're extracting the files to that folder. Okay, it is done now, so you may close the other folders and open the new folder you created. Now you have several folders, the dependencies, hotfixes and so on, but the one you actually want to use, the application, is this one the NZ setup. Double click and you have finally the Amer Nimes Zone installer, okay? As you can see, Polaris Vega Navi 22.5.2 uh, WHQL Signature Revision 2.0, okay? All you have to do is go st start driver installation, sorry. Now, as you can see, you have the automatic slash simple installation and manual slash advanced CLI installation. Before these, these before this new Amer Nimes Zone installer, you only had this one, the manual advanced CLI installation. And the automatic slash simple installation is just so much better. It is really much better and much easier to use, okay? So that's the one we're gonna go with. Now, remember the thing that I told you about the standard driver pack and uh, the, X, the, X, uh, the X9, 10 and 11 optimizations for older cards? This is what it is. Basically, you have the standard driver pack and you have the experimental DX Navi over Polaris Vega Ryzen APUs. Now, if you want to use the regular drivers just to have some advantages that these drivers bring, like for example, recording features and so on, maybe even smart access memory, then you can go with the regular drivers. But if you want to take advantage of those DX9, 10 and 11 optimizations for the older cards, then you definitely want to go with the regular AMD 22.5.2, but on the experimental DX Navi over Polaris Vega and Ryzen APU, okay? That's the one I will pick, so, okay, click on it, and it will start the installing, okay? So far, so good, it is pretty simple to use. Okay, now it, it is basically telling you that it will ask, it will ask you to install some drivers, okay? Got it? Now, install this so driver software anyway. This will appear like four or five times. Two times, three, four, five. Yes, five times. Okay, now it actually asks you to, um, to select the, PC, the PCI Buzz GPU driver that you want. 
Uh, as you can see, if you have a problem with PCIe bug, you can use older PCI bus such as 21.40 or lower or skip PCI bus driver installation. If you are actually installing uh, chipset drivers after this, you do not need a PCI bus driver installation because the chipset drivers will install the new versions of the PCI bus. But so far you have the 21.10 slash 21.40 which are the best for Polaris Vega and Ryzen Vega and you have the 2150 and 22.10 which are the best for Navi and Ryzen Navi basically they even tell you which ones are the best for I, I have Polaris here so I guess I'm gonna go with the 21.40 which is the best for Polaris Vega and Ryzen and it is the most recent one why not I mean let's go with it okay okay so as you can see now we have this the snipe the snappy driver installation something snappy driver installer so sorry something that we did not have before with the previous drivers now we have this which makes things actually easier but it is a bit of a um, it is quite different so most people may be confused by it now we have updated driver ab available for the hall for the audio so we go there we have PCI Buzz update driver available, but we do not want this because we actually selected an older PCI Buzz driver, okay? So you do not want to install the new one because you installed the previous one, which is supposedly better for the Polaris cards. And then you have the Radeon RX 580X. Now, you're... now this card is being read as the 580X because this is how the software handles things. In order to be able to actually use some features on this card, for example, smart access memory, the DX optimizations and so on, um, the software actually needs to read this card as a different one in order to use those same features. If we go, for example, if you have, for example, a 570, it will most likely read it as a 580. If you have a, five, a 470, it will most likely read it as a 570 or 580. Uh, so that's how the software works. So don't worry. If your card appears here as a different one, do not worry because that's how it works. By the way, sorry for my English because I'm quite tired. I'm, I'm still a bit tired. I need some hours of sleep. Um, but, but yeah, that's why I, I keep making mistakes in my English language due to that, because of tiredness, if that's even a word. Anyway, now you select this driver as well and you click install. I'll have to stop the installation here because it will mess up the recording like it did last time and that's why I didn't bring the video sooner as well. So I'll just stop the recording and be right back after the drivers get installed. <coughs> So here we are once again, we're back, um, and after all being installed, it will appear like this, it's successfully installed, system restart required, and successfully, successfully installed, okay? All you have to do is to close, yes, just close it and the installation will continue. Now, in case you don't have the CCC installer locally, we will download the dependencies automatically. This is also a nice thing, so basically before you actually needed to download the driver and then download the dependencies. The dependencies are the Radeon software, okay? So you install the driver and now you need to install the Radeon software. Okay, now we have some more menus here, some more options to finish the installation. Basically, we have on mobile devices, multi-adapter mode only works in Windows 11. Now, you have the single GPU, MS fixed hybrid and MS multi-adapter. The single GPU is for people that only have a single APU and GPU only. MS fixed hybrid, standard Microsoft hybrid switchable mode. And the multi-adapter is basically the advanced Microsoft multi-adapter uh, switchable mode. What multi-adapter brings is that it allows relief features on mobile and allows the RSR feature, the Radeon Super Resolution, to be unlocked on mobile for laptops using the RDNA card. So if you have an RX 5000 or 6000 series, okay, on your laptop, you can choose here the multi-adapter mode and it will unlock the Radeon Super Resolution for your laptop and it will unlock relief features, so basically recording and streaming for your laptop, which is an awesome thing that these drivers do, okay? But for now, we have a single GPU and that's the one we pick. Now we have the switchable GPU, enable, disable or single. Basically, it's the same, but we have only one GPU, so single. 
Now we have the codex. Usually people install the codex beforehand. Uh, everything at least I do. I install drivers and right after that, uh, right after that, sorry, I install the codex. If you never install the codex, you can just go here and select, for example, the full installation, the Microsoft codec plus the K Lite hardware plus full. This is the one you want. If you already have your codex, then go with a basic Microsoft codec because you're completely fine. If you want more things like open videos, video, other videos form, uh, other video formats, sorry, like the AGVC, like the MKVs, something like that, strange or of video formats, then you actually need the codex. Otherwise, you're fine. But for me, I'll go with the basic Microsoft codec. But as I told you, if you did not install the codex before, just go with the full installation. You won't regret it. Now, next, next, and we're now confirming the HWQL signature, basically confirming if Windows is reading these drivers as official or not. And that's one of the main parts because if, the, if Windows does not read these drivers as official, some games won't work due to anti-cheat and some things like that, okay? So now we have the um, DirectX Diagnostic Tool, we open the Display tab and WHQL logo, yes. Congratulations, Windows is seeing these drivers as official and they will, they will work as intended. Exit now. If you have a problem, a problem with anti-cheat based games, WHQL broken or missing, you can fix or restore it on the NZ setup CLI mode. Okay, as you can see, they even give you an uh, advice or a warning that if you have problems with anti-cheat, you, um, you can actually fix the WHQL signing if it isn't working for you. And as you can see, yes, you can exit the installer now or launch the extra menu for some extra tweaking. And it is done as easy as it can be. You have several things here, like the release experimental driver. You have the universal UI and components where you can install things separately. Just install, for example, the Radeon software, install a new PCI bus driver, and so on, so on, so on. Basically, we have all the things that you need here. For example, on the extras, once again, the 10th option is to repair the WHQL and trusted system files problems in anti-cheat anti based games, as they said. So all you have to do now is just restart the computer and you're good to go. So guys, that's all for today's video. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe and share this video even more because my camera's battery is running off. Thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next video. And as always, leave your comment in the comment section. If you need any kind of help, I will help you as fast as possible. As always, see you in the next one, guys.